Hello Info person, this is Anton, and it's time for some more updates from the James Webb Space Telescope. This time mostly focusing on various galaxies and various really far away discoveries, but also some discoveries a little bit closer to home. And actually one of the most recent discoveries was this right here. The official confirmation of the first ever exoplanet discovered by the James Webb. The planet known as LHS 475b that orbits a red dwarf approximately 41 light years away from planet Earth. But intriguingly, this planet seems to be pretty much exactly the same size as planet Earth, actually about 99% of its size, which does make it a pretty unusual terrestrial planet, but very likely much hotter than Earth because it's much closer to the star. But because this observation was made with the James Webb, the scientists were really interested to see if there's any atmosphere. But the preliminary investigation, along with several different models, kind of implies that either there is no atmosphere or it's an atmosphere that we've never seen before and do not really understand. Definitely nothing like planet Earth and most likely nothing to do with hydrogen, methane, but maybe carbon dioxide. At the moment it's a bit unclear. But it's still exciting that the James Webb telescope was able to discover its first official planet. Then it also discovered additional previously unseen young stars in the cosmic cliffs of the Carina Nebula. Here approximately 20 have been discovered so far, with all of these being new baby stars previously unknown to science. This is about 7000 light years away from us, so it's not really surprising we couldn't see them before. And because most of these are usually hidden behind a lot of gas, only infrared telescopes can generally detect them. But nothing specific is known about these stars just yet. Then we also got some of the first images from the nearby Small Magellanic Cloud. In one of the last videos we've discussed the partner, Large Magellanic Cloud, with its famous Tarantula Nebula, but here it decided to focus on a less known object that you're about to see right here. And this is once again another star forming region containing a lot of primordial material and a lot of material that we usually see really really far away in a distant universe. This is known as NGC 346. And here is a beautiful image that the James Webb was able to produce. Here is the same image comparing Hubble with the James Webb. And this is an absolutely beautiful formation that as always reveals how stars form in these extremely energetic and extremely powerful regions. And what makes this particular observation a little bit more exciting than the ones near us or the ones in the large Magellanic Cloud is really because of the chemical composition of the small Magellanic Cloud. It seems to be a little bit more primitive than other galaxies, suggesting that it contains a lot of primordial material similar to what we usually detect about 10 billion years ago in the universe. And so in this case, it's almost like looking back in time to see how various ancient stars were formed. But here, the scientists didn't just detect gas around various protostars, they also detected signs of gas around various protoplanetary disks, potentially seeing billion blocks of not just stars, but also maybe some of the planets, which provides a really important opportunity to study how various ancient planets could have formed early on about 10 billion years ago. But at the moment all of this is still preliminary and no specific disks were identified just yet. Nevertheless, this here is an excellent region to try to figure out how and if planets could form in the early universe and what sort of planets early universe might contain. And so I guess with time we might discover some details. There were also several papers that analyzed the galaxy we've discussed in the previous video, NGC 7469. The galaxy is about 100,000 light years across and is about 220 million light years away from planet Earth. And a galaxy that actually does contain a partner. Here's sort of what this looks like in the image from the Hubble telescope. The partner is in the top right. And so it looks like all of this galactic interaction is definitely creating some really active regions inside the galaxy itself. This galaxy is technically what's known as a Seifert galaxy, or sometimes is also referred to as LIRG or L-I-R-G, luminous infrared galaxy, which basically means that it has a really active galactic center, bright enough to see from far away, but not bright enough to be a quasar. And the recent observations from the James Webb discovered additional star-forming regions, 66 in total, 37 of which were completely new, with many of these stars being extremely young, less than 5 million years old. In the original image, you can sort of see some of them as extremely bright red clouds, with some other studies exploring how this active galactic region seems to influence the distribution of various materials across the galaxy itself, through the process we refer to as the feedback mechanism. It also discovered a lot of turbulent gas very close to the central black hole, 
which seems to displace or even destroy certain types of dust located too close to the central black hole, but also reveals even more star-forming regions in certain locations. As a matter of fact, there seems to be quite a lot of star formation extremely close to the central black hole. This image clearly shows that the center here is extremely bright, but I'm sure more will be discovered about this galaxy in the next few months. Mostly because it's so easy to see and because it's basically in just the right location and just the right position toward planet Earth. Then the scientists studying Stevens Quintet were able to identify several other features that were previously missed. In this case, very, very large shock waves resulting from the interaction of five of these galaxies. And here the unusual shock waves dramatically change some of the gas located inside of them and in some cases seem to even recycle gas, turning it into something else. And interestingly enough, some of these shockwaves seem to actually even produce new galaxies. For example, Field 4 seems to represent some kind of a formation of a dwarf galaxy, whereas Field 6 reveals a lot of molecules that are being broken apart and recycled, creating an unusual tail, implying that these galactic collisions don't just influence galaxies, but also the intergalactic space between them and possibly even lead to the formation of smaller galaxies. So definitely some cool stuff. But the coolest stuff is really from the far away distances, from basically almost the edge of the universe. So for example, right here, the scientists were able to discover the most distant and the youngest bar spiral galaxies ever seen. In this case, this is a galaxy known as EGS 23205, with at least six candidates visible in this image right here. One seems to be really old. And the reason this is unusual is because of the way we think bar spiral galaxies form. They normally require a pretty long time away from other galaxies, away from interaction and from galactic collision in order to stabilize and to then start forming these bars. And these bars are actually extremely potent at controlling gas in the galaxy itself, causing a lot of the gas to then move into the central region, feeding the central black hole, but also increasing the rate of star formation in the center by up to 100 times. But they only seem to form in galaxies that do not have a lot of massive partners, and also galaxies that are generally left alone for at least a billion years to form these structures. But these galaxies seem to be much more distant, existing in even farther universe, farther back in time than anything we've ever seen. Which once again presents a mystery of how exactly these galaxies formed so early on and managed to maintain their bar, or managed to create their bar, 11 billion years ago, when the universe was only under about 3 billion years old. Additionally, 87 galaxies were discovered that seem to have been created about 200 to 400 million years after the beginning of the universe, once again presenting a bit of a mystery. How did they form so early? And what is it that we don't understand about the galactic formation? Or what sort of galaxies are they to begin with? Now it definitely means that there's something missing in our theoretical understanding of how galaxies form, but once again, really importantly, it does not violate any ideas about the Big Bang theory at all. Only the modern theories of galactic formation and galactic evolution, which is of course kind of expected because our understanding mostly comes from computer simulations. And the purpose of James Webb was to try to see if we got them right, and it looks like we didn't get everything right. Although the reality is that these are still very preliminary discoveries, and so with further analysis, the actual distance might be determined more accurately. Even the scientists behind this paper believe that maybe only half of these are truly as far away. The rest might be a little bit closer to us. But intriguingly, another study analyzed about 850 galaxies that existed about 11 to 13 billion years ago and wanted to classify them as different types, for example, spiral galaxies, elliptical, irregular, and so on. And intriguingly, they discovered that the overall percentage of various types of galaxies hasn't actually changed that much, at least in the last 12 billion years. It seemed to be kind of similar to what we see in the modern universe, implying that galaxies seem to mature really quickly, or at least matured really quickly, in the beginning of the universe. And even though originally the scientists believed that they might find a few of these early galaxies in the James Webb observations, they were really surprised to discover so many, with the strangest discovery being highlighted right here. Now it doesn't really seem unusual yet, but in terms of structure, composition, and overall shape, these actually resemble another really unusual galaxy discovered by the project known as Galaxy Zoo a few years ago. They were actually seen as these unusual green dots in various nearby locations in the modern universe. They're known as green peas, basically because they're spherical and green. And generally, these galaxies are really small, only about 5,000 light years across, only a little bit bigger than a typical globular cluster. 
But unlike other galaxies, they seem to have a huge amount of star formation. They're basically like these star factories. And because of this, there's a lot of gas here, and this gas is ionized by all of the starlight, which then makes them appear green. But in terms of the structure, composition, and the overall emissions, these super far away galaxies seem to be actually kind of similar, implying that the scientists have now discovered green peas about 13 billion years ago. Moreover, they seem to possess similar chemical fingerprints, are very similar in metallicity, and even possess the same amount of elements, with their oxygen content being very similar to green peas, but being much lower than what we find in the Milky Way galaxy. And so these galaxies, in terms of chemicals, are actually quite primitive. To some extent, it is something we expect to find in the early universe. So I guess here the question is, why is it that we also find them much closer to us? Although technically, they are super rare around us. Only about 0.1% of all of the galaxies discovered usually have these characteristics. And so here, maybe, the possible answer is that they were just much more frequent before. It's really just an assumption for now, but it could provide some explanation. Although why exactly ancient green peas seem to contain same metallicity and same amount of elements as the ones much closer to home cannot be explained right now. So another really big mystery, galactic mystery, discovered by the James Webb. And we'll probably talk more about this in some of the future videos, just like I did in one of the recent videos that you can find in the description about the mystery of the red spiral galaxies. Hold on a second, editing Anton here. As I was about to finish editing the video, James Webb released one more picture from a really exciting star system only about 30 light years away from planet Earth, AU Microscopii, with the image visible right here. Now this is just the first release, but the reason the star and the image are so exciting is because this is the youngest star in the vicinity of the solar system. It's only about 23 million years old and is technically still a debris disk or a protoplanetary disk that happens to be very close to planet Earth. And in the last few years, the scientists have been observing some really unusual ripples moving inside the disk, visible right here, as well as discovered potentially two planets that already seem to exist here or have begun forming in the last few millions of years. This particular star system is only about 20 million years old, but the James Webb telescope provided the scientists with the most accurate and the highest resolution image of all of this, that even though is still being analyzed, has already revealed that there seems to be some unusual unexplained brightness with the overall disk also appearing to be a lot more blue than it should be, very likely suggesting that there is just a lot of fine dust, tiny particles, that are causing all of these effects. And because this is still a really young star and doesn't really have a lot of radiation pressure, it's not able to eject all of this dust from the system just yet. But other than the picture, we don't really know what else was discovered here and it's very likely going to be revealed in the next few weeks. Which means that you should probably come back if you want to find out what the scientists discovered here. The video is going to be released in the next few weeks. And so if you'd like to find out more, make sure to subscribe, share this with someone who has learned about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Thank you for watching, stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.